everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Tonight I'm doing my top 10 cast strength scotch whiskeys. So, a couple rules here. It can't be a special release unless that special release is replaced with a new special release from the same brand, roughly the same age group, each year. Okay? It can't be a single cask or anything like that. It has to be cast strength. I considered almost everything for this. No age statements, um, a whole bunch of stuff. And what I found was there's not too many older cast strength whiskeys that are OBs that are regular releases. The only one that I could think of now is the new Glen Alkey 21 year old, which obviously can't count because I haven't tried it. So I thought about all the Tamdu, Glen Goyne, Glen Dronic, uh, even the new Highland Park noise statement cast strengths, and none of these made the list. Unfortunately, none of the noise statement ones made the list. I have some honorable mentions I'm gonna get through, then I can give you my top 10. Honorable mentions go as follows. The Craigamore 12 year old from last year. Now I haven't tried the new 20 year old. I really want to, uh, but the 12 year old can't be on the list just because it was a one off. And really, I don't know if they're gonna continue making these. Diageo's doing a great job with these cast strength releases. That 12 year old was a banger. Uh, unfortunately, I not allowed to be on the list. A couple more honorable mentions are the Springbank special releases. That includes the Longrose, the Hazel Burns. Almost all of them are incredible. There are a few core range and I will mention them because some of them didn't make the list, but the special releases are all honorable mentions because they're all great or mostly great anyway. And a bunch of them would have made the list if I was just picking my favorites. Edward Dower 12 and Kill Homemade Expressions are on the honorable mentions list as well. I honestly think they're great whiskeys. They just didn't crack the list. Last but not least, for honorable mentions, and this one couldn't make the list because it's not a scotch. It's the Redbreast 12 year old. Honestly, this would probably be in my top three if it was a scotch. It's an incredible single malt. Uh, there are some Amroots and stuff like that that I would mention in this list as well. If I could, I'm not doing a single malt list. I'm doing a scotch list. That's very important here. Let's start with number 10. Number 10 is the Kalila 15, 17, and 18 year old Unpeateds. These are regularly released. The 15 year old is probably the most common of these releases. They're all excellent. They're really, really good whiskeys. You gotta try them if you haven't already. Kalila is known for their peated whiskeys. They do an incredible job with their unpeated whiskeys. Try them out. Next up at number nine is the Talisker eight year old, 15 year old, and now again, the eight year old. So this one looks like it's gonna be a regular release. The first one was the eight year old. They did such a great job with that that I think it inspired the whole cast strength range to be honest with you. Last year they did the 15, which was a banger as well. I heard that the new eight year old isn't as good as those other two, but that eight year old and 15 year old are incredible. So I'm gonna put this in at number nine because I have a funny feeling that Talisker is gonna continue this annually. Number eight is the Lagavulin 12 year old. Honestly, great stuff. Now they're part of the Diageo special releases, but they've been doing their 12 year old for a very long time. Excellent whiskey. I don't know too many whiskey lovers that don't love the Lagavulin 12 year old cast strength. It's incredible. You have to try it. So I was really impressed when Kilcarran came out with their eight year old. So number seven is the Kilcarran eight year old, but particularly the Sherry cask. This one flew off shells last year. It was incredible. I'm hoping they go Sherry again this year. They seem to be regular releases. The Kilcarran eight year old is awesome stuff. Buy it if you haven't already. Gonna go quickly through these next three because they're all part of the same family. Number six being the Springbank 12 year old. These are hit or miss, but for the most part, you're getting a very good quality whiskey. I've had some incredible ones and I've had some just good ones, but nothing bad. And that's a great tell for these guys. You know how much I love Springbank. These are excellent whiskeys. Honestly, so do yourself a favor and get that Springbank 12 year old, it's awesome. Number five is the Long Grow Red series. Now, I love this. You guys saw this on my shelf for many years. I really love the Long Grow Reds. There's maybe been one or two expressions that were a miss, but out of the six or seven that they've done so far, I can't remember exactly how many now, they've all been pretty great. Um, particularly the Cab Franc and the Port, those were absolutely incredible, but a whole bunch of them are really great. The Malbec's very good as well. It's an instant buy once you see it come out. I recommend the Long Row Reds, you'll really like them. Number four is the Hazelburn Oloroso series. They did a 12, a 13, a 14, and again this year it's gonna be a 13 year old. 
Honestly, the ones I've tried so far are incredible. Last year was an absolute banger. I loved it. I thought it was incredible whiskey. Honestly, Hazelburn 14 made my top six last year of all the whiskeys I tried. And it's very well priced at around $140 Canadian. Pick one up if you haven't already. It might be hard to come by, but they do release it every year. Number three is gonna break some hearts because it's coming in at number three and not number one. But I'm going with the Octomer Point Three and Point Four series. Uh, I really love the Point Threes. There's only been one or two years that I didn't absolutely adore. They're great though. Ten Point Three was awesome. Six Point Three, Seven Point Three are my favorite, of course. But just stick to the Point Threes if you have to pick one. I really like the Point Threes. Octomore is my number three. Number two is the Lefroy 10 year old cast strength. Now, the only reason this is coming in at number two and not number one is because I fell in love with whatever number one is, and you'll find out in just a sec what that is. But the Lefroy 10 year old cast strength, if I tried more of these, I'd probably end up going with this as my number one. These are exceptional. They're way better than the regular 10 year old release. I'm not exactly sure why. I have my suspicions. I think they're using better casks for the 10 year old cast strength than they are for the 10 year old at 43%. Now, obviously they water the other one down to 43%. So you're gonna get some decline already there, but it's not the same whiskey. They're in two different leagues completely. We're talking AHL versus NHL. We're talking AAA baseball versus major league, all right? So the Lefroy 10 year old cast strength, do yourself a favor. If you can't get it in Canada, Try to get it in the UK or the United States. Incredible stuff. Number one recently stole my heart. I tried the batch three last year. It was absolutely incredible. It got better every single time I went back to that bottle. Recently I popped the batch four and I was shocked. It's 56.1%. It drinks like it's 46%. Incredible stuff. Number one has to be the Glen Alki 10 year old cast strength. I love that they put an age statement on this whiskey with the new trend to not put age statements on cast strength whiskeys. You have McAllen doing their classic cut series. Not only is it not cast strength, but it's also not age stated. You have Highland Park doing their new cast strength. They really should have put an age statement on this whiskey. Unfortunately, they didn't. It's still good. It's not on this list, obviously. Very good. They should have put an age statement on it. We can only assume that these no age statement cast strengths are three year old whiskeys because that's how old a scotch has to be in order to be called a whiskey, all right? So unfortunately, a lot of people are choosing not to put an age statement on it. Billy Walker said, hey, let's put an age statement on this whiskey. Let's keep it at 10 years old every year. They have up to four batches so far. Every year is getting better and better. Batch one and two were very light. A lot of people love them for their distillery characteristic. Batch three and four got darker and darker and a lot of the sherry lovers fell in love, all right? so. Really love what Glen Alecky is doing in general. I've become a huge fanboy of Glen Alecky. I honestly wish I can get more of it. It's hard to come by where I am, but I love Glen Alecky. Glen Alecky 10 year old cast strength is a banger. Batch three is incredible. Batch four is very good as well. I'm not sure which one's better. I probably will do a head to head in the near future, but that's my list guys. That's my top 10. Tell me what your top 10 would be for the cast strength range in Scotch. Obviously you can use any age statement. You can use any no age statement, uh, let me know what I missed. I probably overlooked some stuff. I spent a lot of time on this list and it was really hard to come up with 10 because I've tried so many different cast strengths. Um, there are some really great no age statement cast strengths out there, but they vary each year. And unfortunately, they're hiding behind their no age statement because a lot of times they're using that no age statement to drop the age after the initial release. So they come out with their oldest stuff year one, batch one, and then they slowly make it younger and younger to make it cheaper for them and make it more expensive for their buyer, which is unfortunately what's happening in the whiskey world. But hey, that's why I chose these ones. They're all age stated and they're all incredible. That's it for me, guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up. If you really liked the video and you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. You can hit the bell to get notifications for when I do release a video. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can support this channel on Patreon. And you can check out my buddy Gascoin. I'll drop a link to his stuff below. He's doing the music for this channel. He's doing the intro, the edits, the outro. He's doing a lot of work for this channel. He's doing an incredible job and I'm really happy with what he's been doing. So check him out if you haven't already. Cheers guys.